let the participants switch on their videos, uh, Bhavya. Then we can yeah. start off. Ashita, can you switch on your video? Uh, hello and good afternoon, everyone. Wishing everyone a happy World Side Day from OCI. Um, so today we have a special edition of the Unsung Heroes program, and we have with us Mr. Nagraj, Ms. Kitoli, and Ms. Ashika. So let me give you a short introduction about our optometrist uh, for our Unsung Heroes program today. Uh, we have. Ms. Hitoli, who has completed her B optometry from Regional Institute and Paramedical Nursing Sciences, Mizoram University. And she has her private practice from October 2021. She is also a master's student from Shankara Academy of Vision. We welcome you, Hitoli. Thank you, ma'am. Next for is uh, Ms. Hashika, who has completed her Bachelor of Optometry from Lotus College of Optometry in 2013. And also she has completed her M Optometry from ITM University. She is having the working experience of eight years and she also had her own optometry clinic uh, named Drishti Netralay in Danja Ratnagiri and currently she is working in Danja. Welcome Hashika. And next we have Mr. Nagraj, who is very well known as community optometrist, and he has seven plus years of working experience in community optometry. Uh, he is a graduate from Shankara College of Optometry, and also currently he is working as senior optometrist, Aloka Vision Program, ZAIS. He also has an experience of working as a faculty at IABM College and also he has worked at Shankara Eye Hospital as an optometrist. We welcome you, Nagraj. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would like to welcome uh, everybody who are live on Facebook and along with the OCI team. Um, without delaying any further, let us get into our discussion. And uh, my first question goes to Ms. Hitoli. So uh, Hitoli, as I explained um, in her bio, she has her own practice. Hitoli, we would like to know how did you build your practice? Thank you, ma'am, for this time. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, you're audible. Okay. Uh, I started, I literally started from scratch, a complete zero yeah. since it was uh not owned or like none of my known members or family members on the opticals so uh it was not an easy easy task but then with the help of a very kind senior and a friend who even guided me in getting the machines and where to get them by sharing the contacts they were very good to me and they helped me in, th in those processes as well also, I also try my best uh, to keep in touch with my other friends so that they could uh, guide me in the process. And of course, mm. it, did, it did took a little time, but then it eventually happened. Uh, I Actually, the plan was not like I, start, I, I finished my studies and I wanted to have my own practice set up. It was not such like that, but looking at our community and how much more our private practice could help the community, I decided to go for uh, my own practice. So um, it has been a lot like two years of journey and it, it's, it's very good, I would say that. And I'm very thankful for what has been happening all this time. So I'll just be let it be. That's great to hear, Kitoli. Yeah, Thank so you. it's very inspiring to hear that uh, without having any family background of having an optical, you built it on your own. Yeah. And it's very inspiring for all the optometrists who would actually plan to start their own practice. Thank you, Itoli. We'll come back to you with further more questions. Um, my next question is to uh, Nagraj. So, Nagraj, you've been serving in the community 
and you have reached uh, many remote locations in India. So we would like to know what inspired you serving in the community. Uh, Nagraj, you are on mute. So uh, thank you, Bhavia, like uh, uh, for inviting me for this program. Um, actually, uh, people are the uh, people actually inspired me, and um, most my, and also my profession, you know, uh, has inspired me to uh, to be a community optometrist. Um, I like to be called as a community optometrist. I think um, now with an experience of uh, almost seven years now, I think I have traveled almost all the corners of a country you know reached out to the places where you know um very uh, um, very difficult uh, for the people to reach you know um and um, when when you travel to different uh, corners of a country you get to see different people with uh, different climate culture you know different traditions and different sort of hospitality you get um you know that is something more inspiring uh, as uh, for us you know it it totally gives you a total different uh, prospect in life and um, and also you know my you know sometimes my friends ask me like uh, isn't it boring for you like doing the same regular um, uh, refraction uh, uh, wherever you go and conduct the various camps but do you do only refraction in those camps but maybe uh, it's just a uh, maybe people might feel it's just a boring refraction i do but you know, the refraction I do in these community camps brings the smiles on the people's faces. So uh, that is what always keeps us motivated. Maybe just giving a, a simple pair of spectacle in the community to these community people will uh, make a huge difference in their life. I have seen a lot of examples, you know, um, um, since I've traveled and seen a, a lot of people in the community, you know, by the end of the day, when you sleep, you sleep with smile. You know, yes, I have done something for the community. That That's what, you know, keeps me motivated. And uh, being a community optometrist, you know, um, it, it made me become a, a traveler, vivid traveler. It made me um, a good uh, optometrist. It made me a photographer. And all these things, you know, um, daily uh, keeps me motivated and inspiring and to, to do good more for the community. Thank you, Nagraj. I would like to add, uh, Nagraj has a passion of photography, which he is also continuing with his uh, uh, motive of becoming a community optometrist. Um, and also, it's very inspiring to listen to that. You can sleep with happiness and you are satisfied at the end of the day. Uh, we hope you continue to do the same work, Nagraj. Uh, my next question is to uh, Ms. Hashika. Uh, Hashika, so um, we would like to know about your uh, experience from your practice. You had uh, your own clinic at, at uh, Lanja Ratnagiri, right? So we would like to know about your experience. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, and good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Starting my own practice was a very great experience what I had. And uh, I had and for this inspiration, sir, my colleagues, my friends started their own. And the experience about the starting the practice was very great. Like other than optometry, I learned many things and very quickly. Like uh, whoever knows me, I know they know that I'm very slow learner. But uh, this practice taught me many things like accounts finance, stock holding, marketing, many other aspects of the clinic, which you need to know by yourself. And uh, um, Amumta's, uh, who is my senior and my friend, he helped me a lot in uh, taking good decisions, right decisions about my, how, which uh, instruments to buy, how to invest, how to speak to, um, to the marketing and other things. So I thank you for it. It was very great experience for me. And uh, as as others, as I heard Nagra, it's the same thing because I I started my own practice in very rural area. Where it is uh, just very small city, Lanza in Ratnagiri. So uh, it made uh, it made a very much change in their life. So 
so uh, and here your crowd is completely different what we see in major cities so helping them and making the smile on their faces is a, a biggest uh, profit i would say of my life and uh, i thank everyone my husband my family my family <laughs> thank you ashika uh, it's really very inspiring to hear that uh, these optometrists have started uh, without having any family background uh, starting their own private practice and also learning different aspects like marketing uh, business selling etc uh, that has definitely given new insight for uh, what optometrists can learn more than optometry thank you uh, my next question to kitoli uh, would be uh, so what all optometry specialties do you have at your practice right now kitoli uh i have i've started with all the basic requirements as in ar as in chair you need lensometer vision drum for both distance and near color vision chart trial box and i have also a few like 6 months ago like that i've also got a sleep lamp which in the beginning i was not able to purchase it so i'm also thankful that i believe that i'm also growing along with my patients also for the dispensing i have got the uh, dispensing for dispensing the edger the cutter the fitting tools and everything that is required for an optometrist to give a proper refraction i think i've got it all that's great to hear hitoli i hope you also do uh, pediatric workups along with uh, seeing normal patients right yes ma'am yes ma'am i do it yes i do have the pediatric charts for the distance and the near yeah okay okay So, any future plans, Hitoli? Uh, now that uh, it's good to hear that you have set up your own sleep lamp as well in your clinic. So, what uh, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, I mean, what are your goals for the future? Main, uh, uh, I've been trying a lot, like to upgrade myself ever since I started my on this journey. I know that it was not an easy or this thing for me since. i had literally have to do everything myself here so but then with the support of all the people around me and my patients being very good to me and seeing their responses and their trust in me i have i've been studying and i have also been trying to read more than what i used to when i was a student so uh recently with my street lamp i have been trying what i have been trying to do is uh try to diagnose at least or know what is happening so that i i could prevent i could prevent the disease could, which could go severe by advising them or letting them know in advance before it reaches to the final stage like that so uh what i can say is that uh being my being on my own has taught me a lot more than what i thought i should be doing as as a practitioner in the beginning all i thought was if i could give them a proper prescription or if i could uh, give them a proper counseling that was enough but seeing the unavailability even in our own places i have learned that i need to do more than what i can I, and i i still need to upgrade a lot myself so i'm trying i'm still not there yet but hopefully i'll be able to do more than what i'm doing at the moment nice to hear hitoli uh we hope you add on to more specialities along with learning masters in optometry yes um my next question is um uh, for nagraj uh, uh nagraj so can you share your experience about conducting screening especially helping the rural population now that you have been uh, most of the remote locations in india so um reaching out to this uh, very remote locations in india is you know um, very difficult you know people don't accept you directly uh, the moment you go and say that we we want to conduct a camp here so we do lot of background work we reach out to the ngos we understand uh, you know the work they do 
uh, the healthcare, different healthcare activities happening you know, in, the, in that um, location. Um, we speak to them, we understand, and we uh, we try to discuss with them on what uh, grounds we can uh, we can partner with them and uh, how their other healthcare activities can be involved. Uh, you know, uh, to combine our uh, eye screening. So um, I think we have reached almost uh, um, all parts of our country for now. So um, you know, there are a lot of experiences. You know, where there are a lot of patients. Patients I've seen. You know, some of the experience I can share is like. Um, I think everyone knows uh, Chennapatna in our, in Karnataka, where it is known for a toy factory. So uh, when we first time, you know, most of these places where we go are, you know, um, they never got their eyes checked uh, before. This, uh, whenever we go, they, they say that this is the first time uh, we are going to get our eyes tested. So when we went to this uh, Chennapatna toy factory, uh, most of the, um, the employees in the toy factory are kind of... Um, uh, presbyopes uh, more than 40 years and um, <clears throat> you know uh, when we went and screened them and then just gave them uh, um, um, a, a reading glasses to them you know uh, they, they noticed that you know earlier they're having difficulty when you know when it is coming to the uh, precision of toy making you know the you know they have to make small small grooves in the wood and they have to color um, color the toys and you know this eye hand coordination is very much important for them to do so when they got to know you know uh, that you know uh, just by wearing a spectacle the vision has improved more and the precision in making the toys has become you know uh, better than before so you know uh, they all thanked us you know that uh, otherwise they were about to retire very soon because i think they were in a in a consumption that um, they, they are getting old and their vision is you know getting less um, you know, that was one of the experience and the other experience is once we have gone to a school screening where the, you know the kid uh, uh, she is having almost uh, minus five diapters of myopia and uh, she's not even wearing uh, glasses and she knows her vision is very poor um, when we try to you know uh, speak to her uh, she says that uh, she also have complained it to their parents and um, you know, uh, their parents were telling that uh, if you start wearing the glasses, you have to wear it throughout your life. So they are not ready, uh, you know, for the uh, for the kid to wear, uh, you know, wear the glasses. So we, our team, went and counseled, and you know, they um, they explained the importance of wearing the uh, spectacle lenses, uh, the importance, you know, of the uh, correcting the refractory error at that young years. Um, how, how much it will uh, impact in her academic career. So uh, these are few experiences, um, you know, which we, uh, when we go to rural communities, because they all will have a, a totally different kind of uh, perceptions, superstitious beliefs, thinking, uh, you know, uh, um, they are skinned, uh, children with skin, they think that it's a good luck. You know, all these things, yes. So uh, we, uh, when we go and screen and, um, you know, we'll find all these different cases and uh, we are not only just doing a screening, we are also kind of creating awareness in those places. And um, it's always a wonderful experience, um, you know, reaching out to these uh, rural, uh, rural parts of India. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, Nagraj, thank you. Uh, I understand that providing glasses is not only helping them with vision, but also Developing, uh, it is helping them with their profession as well. And also, yes, breaking myths is a very important factor when we are trying to generate awareness. Um, thank you uh, so much. My next question would be for uh, Harshika. So Harshika, what difference do you see in terms of optometry practice compared to Mumbai and uh, Ratnagiri? Uh, Harshika, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so there is a large difference between the practice in Mumbai and in uh, Ratnagiri because, uh, uh, like an experience, just small uh, example, if you can give for every, out of 10, 10 classes, what we give in Mumbai, eight have uh, computer protection. It is mandatory for them to give them just like that, and without asking any question or anything, without the uh, price list, anything. Out of 10, uh, eight. Eight people will 
will take it. But here in Maratnagar, it is completely different, ma'am. Uh, because eighty percent of the population, eighty to seventy percent of the population, still uh, depends on the farm, uh, farming and other related like poultry or uh, other uh, other farming related business for their daily earning. So for them, computer protection out of ten. I I always give only one or two patients will ask for the computer protection because they have they are it's not mandatory. What they required is day night glasses because their work is uh, more of uh, outside. So they 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 get uh, very much uh, frustrated because of the heat because the yeah, Ratnagiri area is all there there is always uh, very hot season uh, same like Mumbai very humid and hot sun is always hot so uh, it's very difficult for them to work. In that conditions without day night glasses, so that is the main difference between these two. Other difference is budget. If budget is the main uh, issue, because uh, in Mumbai, three to four thousand is a minimum price. Basic, even if we give the basic glasses, it's a minimum price. Here you have to start only the pricing by thousand uh, or fifteen hundred, or you can go maximum to three thousand. That is out of ten, one will take five thousand glasses or something. Other will go for that. So we have the restrictions of the budget also. So we have we. I always try and give the best in that budget possible, because sometimes it's not always possible to give them complete uh, in that package. So and education is the other thing. They don't for for some people uh, patient bifocal. They don't even know. Uh, they have not gone beyond bifocal. progressive is a very new thing for them it's like we uh, like how we used to uh, when the progressive came when we in the college when how the uh, my seniors and uh, everyone used to teach us we need to teach them from that uh, very great now uh, that practice but i enjoy and as i said we uh, because of this different from ratnagiri to from mumbai to here there is a lot of difference and i am learning every day so my practice gives a new lesson for me every day new patient new uh, thank you so much harshika yes i definitely agree with uh, the way the business model or the um, practice that you do definitely differs from uh, tier 1 city to tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, thank you uh, my next question uh, would be for uh, hitoli uh, so hitoli how are you managing studying masters along with your practice uh, i I actually uh, finished my graduation in 2020, but as I got involved in my own practice and management and this optical also, uh, I was not able to join for my masters earlier. So after a year of two and a half years of gap like that, I joined it this year. So what I have done is I have took off for my studies like for three weeks like that, and I traveled to Ludhiana, Punjab. for attending my classes physical classes since it's a regular course so so then after that we were assigned to uh, for assignments on all these things which uh, it's just a beginning so i'm being able to cope up right now it's not as hard as i thought as it would be earlier but it's basically like getting a getting yourself checked and getting a new pair of glasses so it will of course take some adjustment but then hopefully i'll be able to manage it and then uh, i also learned in this process that i have to do a lot of study for my research since during during my practice i was not able to keep up with the study with my work i get tired at the end of the day so i have uh, though i uh, do online studies once in a while or read once in a while i was not able to read as much as i want so with joining with my masters i believe that i will be able to give more time to my studies also especially for my research since it's not going to be easy and it's just a beginning like i said but hopefully i'll be able to manage it for now it's quite okay so 
Thank you, Itoli. You have any plans of conducting your uh, research at your own clinic? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Research, uh, research will be uh, on my best on my own clinic since uh, all the diseases or something is on referral, the diagnostic. So what I can do is uh, what I can practice, I'm going to best do my research on that. So basically, we have chosen a topic on boorish delay and all this CTC studies. So let's see how it comes up. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be able to do more. Thank you. Thank you, Hitoli. Uh, that's really very much satisfying when you do research at your own clinic where you don't have to run behind any other uh, hospital or a practitioner for patient and etc. Um, yeah, I know that struggle as well. Uh, my question uh, next is for uh, Nagraj. Uh, so Nagraj, what were the common challenges that you had faced uh, throughout your journey? Um, the common challenges we faced um, uh, for conducting camps here, like mostly the travel at some places to reach out the people. Um, maybe when we are going to mountains, we have to reach out to um, a community with, who are living in the valley. So mostly we have to travel, uh, uh, you know, go on foot. Uh, uh, travel is one of the uh, difficult challenges we face. And apart from that, again, um, you know, we go and conduct the screening um, and um, we provide them glasses. And that sometimes uh, the people need uh, surgical interventions as well. Um, so uh, again, uh, when it comes to these people in community, they don't believe, they don't trust again. We, we try and uh, refer them to the near, nearest hospitals, but they don't go because they don't trust. Uh, um, again, they have to travel from their uh, location to their, uh, you know, their nearest uh, tertiary hospital might be, you know, uh, a few kilometers away, maybe a two, three hours journey for them to go and get their surgeries done. And again, they have to stay in the hospitals. So uh, these people, they, they don't go to the hospital when we refer to the, um, you know, uh, to, the, uh, to any hospital for their surgical interventions. And, um, and also uh, closing this loop is very difficult. Uh, like, you know, uh, conducting the fraction and, you know, if any cataract, uh, um, uh, they are uh, getting their surgeries done and uh, you know, consultation with uh, this ophthalmologist. Um, uh, this closing this loop is always difficult when it is coming to this uh, sort of community I can. So what we need to think at is now uh, we have to practice something which is people centered, you know, integrated people centered eye care, like you know uh, uh, the hospitals and also you know, uh, ophthalmologists and optometrists together. You know they uh, they have to reach out. To such locations and you know, there, when, there should be some frequent uh, screenings or you know uh, uh, should happen it shouldn't be a, a one-time activity where you just go and conduct the uh, eye camp and then come back it should be a regular activity and it should be people-centered uh, uh, integrated eye care uh, will do good uh, in such the remote locations is what i feel Adding to that question, Nagraj, uh, so do you guys even check for uh, spectacle compliance? Because uh, most of the time, like you said, it's very difficult to convince the rural population about going about for a surgery or wearing glasses, etc. So do you even uh, look into checking whether they're actually wearing the glasses or is it helpful for them? Have you uh, looked into these aspects? Yeah, uh, generally, uh, for us to physically go and check these people is a little difficult for us. So what do we do is uh, we do a telephonic uh, feedback call for them, and then we check if they have any uh, uh, if they have any problem. Otherwise, also uh, um, mostly wherever we are going, we try to connect with some sort of local NGOs or some healthcare organizations. So that uh, uh, if they have any problem, they can reach, uh, reach out to these NGOs or the people um, and they will communicate uh, um, the, uh, their uh, problems or you know difficulties to us. And we try to, if, if uh, they have any difficulty or there is any broken spectacle, so we try to replace by connecting with these NGOs. So um, connecting with these NGOs is also very much important um, um, whenever we are go uh, doing this uh, community AI care camps. 
thank you so much nagraj uh, my next question would be uh, to harshika so harshika uh, how do you uh, manage practice along with the family responsibilities as you are also a mother yeah it's a bit difficult <clears throat> but uh, in the starting when when i was a mother uh, for two years i took a break because uh, uh, 2021 and after post that the covid came in 20 uh, 2020 so it was a very good gap for me to connect with uh, my kid now he is four years so it's uh, not that difficult initially after two years when i started again working it was very difficult for me to handle uh, him and my professional life but uh, now it's fine and now i i am able to manage but if, what i feel is because i am able to manage my family and responsibilities and his responsibilities as well that gives me a good strength to face any challenge in my life or in whole day and when i go home when he welcomes me with a great smile that's the bonus what i get in the evening so uh, it's not that difficult and it's not only for me uh, my colleagues my sisters my seniors everyone has done it so we any any woman who is a mother even if they are in india or outside india or any other remote location it's like a they are like a warrior so every women has inspired me this so i am very thankful to them i Thank think hitoli so hitoli should take inspiration from uh, harshika for future <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much harshika definitely it should be an inspiration for uh, people who have taken a break or going to take break or planning to start their work back again um my uh, next question is for uh, uh, ms hitoli again uh, hitoli what are the common challenges that you had faced uh, throughout your journey since you had started the practice on your own so what were the common challenges that you had faced um i, uh, I would say that there uh, it was not that always stuff as we think not saying it is easy also but then having a good friend a companion or someone who could guide you will always make your journey easier so in my case i i got a friend and i also got a senior who was there for me when i needed uh, some guidance or help so they basically made my <laughs> this journey a little easier though there were tough times uh, it was always like uh, to the fate of the people in me they they believe that i could do it and i also knew that I, i could i can manage it i have a full trust that i would be able to do it so that that made me where i am i would say so the the big challenges that i would say was uh, not having a proper referrals sometimes it happens that uh, the patients are not always needing uh, surgery uh, the patients are not always needing our prescriptions or our treatment they need to go for further assessment so for during this during this time not we, we are not in such a big city that we had a big reputed hospital or something where we could refer so that also becomes a challenge and which is why which motivated me to also work harder because i know that the referrals where we are going to refer them should be proper so if i don't have that i should be the one doing it so this this challenges also motivate and help me every day to read more and to study more so that i could treat them better But unless it's for surgery and for refer unless it required a particular disease treatment i have to manage it so this is the challenges that i face okay uh, hitoli uh, adding to that uh, we have another question that is um, so now there won't be any uh, knowledge about uh, 
this uh, so uh, that there is nothing that we learn in the college uh, about uh, the loans marketing etc etc so how did you get yes. knowledge about these things like running a business uh, <laughs> i think both harshika and hitoli can uh, take this question yes, uh, yes. first we'll finish with hitoli uh, like like i've already mentioned earlier since none of our families or the close ones were in this entrepreneurship or this business in this line it was also another challenge but uh for me when i was setting up luckily i was lucky enough that my parents and my siblings could support me in financial ways so i didn't have to go through that loan process or anything as such and i could i also got help from financially morally they helped me in building it but I've also gone through this online, this thing that uh, there, being in a technology world, I'll say that uh, there's everything online. If you want to know something, unless it's, it's not like 100% what you get there is true or what is given there, you have to follow that. But if you look and if you read it, if you're looking, you'll find the answers. So what I have done is that uh, when, uh through the it comes it also comes through experience as well but uh when i begin it the first 10 10 months i was in a private setup not my own so during those few months i learned it how to even do in a business how to even grow the business even through those few months though i was not there for years so some i would say that people some people take one, two months to learn what some people take 10, 20 years to learn. So if we keep ourselves sharp, we don't have to go through that long process. Working few months in outside practice in opticals or few months internship in hospitals have already helped me already. So by then I was confident that uh, I, I can do on my own in this practice, uh, being an independent. So. Thank you, thank you, Itoli. That's one of the great suggestion for uh, budding optometrists that working in different organizations at your place of interest would actually generate knowledge about these kind of things. Uh, Hashika, would you like to add on to this? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, financially, in the starting, I would say uh, yeah, Itoli was fortunate that all the family members could, could help them. But uh, when I started, I had my savings, few of my savings and few of my husband supported me for the same. So I didn't have to go through the loan process that way. But it's a, a great learning because because of that little bit of financial crisis, I had to uh, you know sh uh, shut down my practice because of that. But the uh, so it's a big learning for me that whenever next time I will start, first I will go for the loan process which is available i don't know about other states but definitely i am in that process that school of learning uh, in maharashtra there are uh, maharashtra government provides a loan with a low interest on your caste or on your profession so uh, you i uh, better you can uh, get someone who can help you in this case because uh, being from an optometry background and no one is from the business part uh, in my family so getting the loan was very difficult initially for me but i know i have some of my friends who can help me in this of course they will take some few few of commission but it is always better to go with them because uh, few, uh, we we may not know the complete details of the scheme what uh, government is providing but it is always better to go for a government schemes or a government uh, banks for the uh, loan because private bank loans are very high and uh, re repayment of that it becomes sometimes very difficult because profit one month you may not have that much profit that you can repay it. so it is always better to have that that's what i experienced and other than my like marketing accounts that is that is a very basic thing you uh, like he said that everything is online 
accounts i used to keep online i had one of my friend who helped me in the setting up that marketing i learned it on my own i have never used insta or anything but for this i started to use using instagram from the marketing so this is a very much learning process and i know now just now i have uh, stopped practice but i know the next time when i start again i will be having that previous experience to add but it is always better to have a, a finance person with you to uh, help you through the load that's what i learned in this course thank you uh, thank you so much harshika that's actually an eye opener about the getting loans or uh, to start your own practice uh, my next question would be uh, to nagraj uh, so nagraj um, you are out there uh, in remote locations uh, organizing for the camp so how uh, how do you obtain permissions from the local health authorities or uh, public health sectors over there to organize these camps is it very difficult or what is the procedure that you follow um, um what do we follow is uh, generally we try to you know uh, we directly don't involve in getting the permissions so uh, we that's why we take uh, take the help of ngos so uh, ngos or other people who are All, um, already doing some sort of activities in the community so they are they will be in uh, good terms with the local government or any uh, 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 with the government so uh, when we connect with the N ngo and we partner with them we you know we take their help you know to getting the permissions uh, uh, done from the local local authorities or government so that is how we uh, um, you know do the uh, camp thank you nagraj uh, i know definitely the ngos would uh, and other organizations they definitely help in uh, organizing these camps um, so my next question is uh, to uh, harshika i think this question is good for you to uh, answer uh, so after uh, completing your bachelors you had taken a break and then you had joined completed masters also along with your practice so why do you think upgrading knowledge is important when you are practicing it's very important because when we pass out in 2013 what was whatever the conditions were of the market of the jobs is completely different right now so it is always better to go for a specialty clinics because that time the specialty contact low vision was a uh, main part the by binocular was a part but in the college it was always taught a basics or a little bit of more than the basics but uh, after working so many years from the from passing out from lotus and then then joining there i thought we need we need some upgradation in this race because masters gives you more approach and if you want to go outside it's a better uh, better uh, qualification you add on in your own so that's why upgrading the knowledge more than the degree the knowledge is important and that's why it is better to always go for something more than what you have done uh thank you harshika um uh, so my next question would be for uh, hitoli so um hitoli uh, uh i think uh, even harshika can answer this question so attending conferences uh, is very important because you would like to keep updated with the uh, uh with your knowledge and uh, so how difficult do you think is traveling to uh, these conferences for you because you are practicing in remote locations i would say that it's it's all about priority so once you do how difficult it may be if you think that you want to do it you just get it done so of course there will be include there it will include a lot of cost your time and your energy but uh i have seen that the satisfaction and the uh, interest in my patients that how happy they are when we treated them so i know that by attending this conference i'll get to treat more of those which i've neglected before which i thought i will not be able to do it 
like the recent my recent attend uh like like my recent conference which i attended which has taught me a lot for the special kids i always think that this uh, this was not meant for me i i would just do the basics and then if these things i should pass on to someone who, who has more knowledge but attending these conferences has always boosted us and encouraged us that we we also can do it it's not that uh, someone is specialized for that anyone or each of us can still do it even though we may not be in this profession also it has even beyond our profession we could do many things and even within the profession so these things only by attending the conferences and seminars we we get through uh we get the idea and the knowledge we get the wisdom on how to do this so despite the challenges like um like i said it's the priority so it's all about your priority so even though it may be difficult i still try to attend some online i still continue to attend if it's not uh, too far i still try to travel at least in the name of the conference by taking a break so yeah. that apart from work we also need a break to relax to refresh ourselves to do more so these conferences are a way of getting myself relaxed i would also say that yeah. I totally love that when you said it's your priority. Uh, thank you so much, Hitoli. It would be really great if um, all the optometrists understand that uh, uh, you using newer techniques and learning or upgrading yourself to treat patients, making it as your own priority will definitely change it so much in your own practice, and you will definitely be satisfied at the end of the uh, end of the day, like Hitoli mentioned. Would you like to add anything, Harshika? Um, yeah, I would uh, like to add that you see, I, from the day I passed out for one or two years, I attended conference. After that, I could not get it because that time the because of the family, I could do it. But yes, even if you can't attend the uh, conference, there are many papers available online. I always read through that if there is any special case or anything. Recently, I got one of the cases uh, in the clinic only. The clinic where I work, the patient was a RP patient, and the complete family uh, had the, her, his sister also had the same problem. So for that, for the new techniques, I immediately I searched up, I read, I read some uh, papers for that. So always uh, attending conferences is one of the biggest part, and you get refreshed, you get booster. But it's not always possible because when you stay in a remote location, traveling to Mumbai, and then traveling again over there becomes difficult but yes of course you can read online anytime anywhere because mobile is always with you yeah uh thank you ashika yeah, definitely reading is very important uh the same question uh goes to nagraj also so nagraj how do you upgrade uh, your knowledge since you're very busy traveling uh for all the community camps and uh, what does this teach you with regards to culture behavior so um, most of the times, you know, um, I had a different uh, uh, thing, uh, different sort of mindset up only like I never attended the conferences before uh, until recently I have attended a Vision 2020 conference, uh, you know, which actually changed my perception only. So I thought like um, I was mostly traveling and doing screenings and helping the community more into the field. But when I attended this conference, I have learned a lot of things, you know, a lot of changes in the field uh, how can i upgrade myself what are there are different techniques which you can uh, learn new techniques which you can learn and um, you can present uh, about your work in the in the in these conferences you know make them make others also understand the difficulties we are having in the communities and also you can uh, tell them how uh, how beautiful the community optometry it is so if, uh, and most of the times when I travel to these communities, you know, um, um, I am uh, we are going to be the first and last person uh, uh, for them, you know, to uh, screen or do something. So I think, you know, upgrading the uh, knowledge, um, you know, uh, in a 
different techniques and new methods and uh, will help a lot in the community uh, optometry and um, i have learned uh, 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 learned from this uh, conference i have attended so far i have not attended many conference conferences but um, after that i think i'm going to attend uh, more of the conferences that can help me in the practice of uh, practicing community optometry and um, uh, time yeah coming to the uh, cultures you know um, and different uh, locations you get to see uh, different different conditions in because when it, india is a very vast country with different uh, uh, you know change in the climate culture uh, you know for every 500 to 600 kilometers so even when it comes to um, uh, eye related issues also you know um, there will be it will be different you know um, we have done a study uh, in the uh, himalayas once we went to uttarakhand where we thought you know uh, um, uh, we were screening people in the mountains where we thought uh, the people on the mountains will be uh, um, will get affected from uv radiation so the uh, we thought uh, that you know they will have more eye related problems but then we have learned uh, uh, after screening the people in the plains and after see seeing the people in the mountains that you know uh, people in the mountains mountains are taking more measures you know when there is uh, uh, peak uh, uh, you know sun uh, they tend to be in indoors and you know they complete their work in the early hours and uh, the amount of cataracts or derisium are very less when it is compared to the you know, people in the plain so you'll also you know if you are doing some sort of studies like this you'll also um, understand more about the uh, community okay uh, thank you so much nagraj definitely the culture behavior and also the uh, climate and everything definitely matters and also the eye conditions differ from each region uh, also um, my next question is uh, for both hitoli and harshika that uh, whether do you have tie ups with local optas for referral uh, who will refer you back for if, the, if there is any need of contact lens or low vision or any vision therapy hitoli you would like to answer first okay ma'am uh, recently only uh, like during this past months only i have been in contact only way back uh, when i first started of course i have a contact but there is no such thing as that not local tie up still till now but we do keep in touch when i have a problem i i just tell them my problem that this patient have this so i'm referring it to you that too i do it here but no nothing is like a professional uh, nothing is like they refer for my contact or something like that. But recently we have been keeping in touch so that I, I believe that they will also uh, send when they feel that it's our job to do it. So in the past I felt some, but then I, since it has been a little recent, so yeah, I would say that I'm building on that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, it would take time, I believe. Yes. Uh, Hashika, yes, uh, what is, uh, would you like to add to this? Uh, yes, uh, for cataract, uh, contact lens patients were very less of contract lens or vision therapy because, uh, as I told, this area is not that much developed. So, contact lens was very minimal, like very minimal. Vision therapy was out of question. I had few instruments with me. But uh, never did it accordingly. Uh, for one or two patients, I did for uh, some workups, but not as a therapy because they were not ready. And for cataract and other uh, in interventions, yes, uh, I I was uh, connected with uh, the local ophthalmologist, but that too it was 40 kilometers from uh, here. So uh, yes, it was difficult. But uh, when I sent two three patients over there. So and uh, in this uh, in this uh, local remote area, you need some of the um, ophthalmologist who is proper ophthalmologist because this is one of the case what I had seen in my uh, just said that one um, one optometrist is treating himself as an is uh, a senior optometrist. I don't know even if he is the optometrist, but he is uh, doing an ill practice of uh, taking a surgeries. 
he see he takes the cataract camps and he call up some other uh, ophthalmologist from other district and does it and call himself a doctor so this kind of uh, malpractices were were very common in this but um, when i started i used to refer it to doctor in rathiri now where i work uh, in tigo i get they have started a uh, proper practice in nanda so i'm happy for that that i'm working with them to improve the uh, you know, the standards what it used to be before it is very other and people are also recognizing what is the difference between this and the that malpractice so it's a uh, very important to have an attachment with uh, ophthalmologist local ophthalmologist that is very much important okay uh, yeah definitely uh, there is no way that we avoid these kind of malpractices that happens around uh, but uh, yes uh, slowly the cross reference will only develop when we generate awareness and also when uh, the ophthalms or the person who is cross referring to us knows the outcome of what happens after giving uh, this kind of specialty treatment to the patients uh, thank you so much harshika uh one last question to hitoli we have um, that is uh, do you do community screening to drive patients to your clinic hitoli um uh, actually i hardly go for this services i have done it only twice that is because they requested me for the camp i don't personally go for myself that i want to do this camp to drive them here i i believe in my own uh, hard work and i believe in my own self that if i'm doing good to the patient my patients are always the speaker for me and they are always the media for me so what i do is that they requested me to come for the camp so i went twice they've arranged everything of course and then uh, that of course that has also led to my benefit as well but it was not that i personally do the camp for driving them to my clinic i have not i've i've not done such thing, nothing as such like that and just uh, my clinic work and this thing the patients who have visited me have definitely uh, been a good friend to me all through this journey it was uh, my own patients who have always pushing me they have they are the ones who have been supporting me be it a stranger or any known or unknown people it has always been uh, a good relationship building a good relationship that's what i would say that that has helped me a lot and then uh, learning how to be very truthful at all times we we i have been always frank to my patients and i've always tell them that this is beyond what i can do and i've always been fair about what i can do so they know that what i do so accordingly they bring back the friends their relatives their distant and so in no way i have gone for, uh, for the camp for bringing a patient like that okay Bhavya. thank you so much yes ma'am can i yeah can i have a few comments if it's sure. that's yes, okay sure. yeah sure. Hitoli and Harshika, I think, truly inspiration in terms of uh, women, especially uh, leading their own private practice. You know, with your own investments and things. Uh, I wish a lot of future generation people learn uh, from all the three of you, including Nagraj, who is uh, into community uh, eye care. Um, I just thought I'll uh, throw a few ideas, and then uh, see how that goes. Uh, for Hitoli and Harshika, if you have. any like uh, harshika said rp case that she saw or hitoli might come across some you know unusual case or, or something yes. that's presented where you mm -hmm. treated and it, it is made a huge impact on the patient if you yes. can just uh, talk about it uh, we can actually help you to write it up uh, as oci and maybe publish it uh, maybe in in, uh, in any of the optical journals or even in uh, ophthalmology journals so i think that is something where we could support you in terms of your contributions being recognized even uh, you know one patient where you've had an impact or a family where uh, you know it was uh, like harshika said uh, the entire family had rp and then she had to refer uh, to some of the uh, you know publications and stuff so it it's something really great that somebody sitting in a remote place has actually diagnosed 
RP uh, through her expertise and practice and then referred them accordingly, right? So I think these are all stories which really help uh, the optometric community. Uh, similar to what Nagaraj was saying, like, uh, you know, in a high altitude, you think that UV radiation is going to be high, uh, but actually uh, they don't really have uh, much of eye illness. On the contrary, uh, I think now we find that through myopia, sunlight is useful to the eye <laughs> as well. So, uh, and I think even dietary uh, implications, like Hitoli, I'm sure the diet is very different from the rest of India, like what you guys eat uh, in the mountains and in Northeast. Mm -hmm. So they must be having an implication uh, as well on eye health, right? Mm -hmm. And many yes. a times you all walk so much. There's no transport, so you have to walk, right? Uh, yes. Even in the hilly regions, I'm sure Nagraj must have seen that they all walk. So that means physical exercise is already there. And then again, yes. exposure to the sun is already there. So all these small, small things, even if you can write like a couple of paragraphs and send it out to us, right? Then we can actually uh, support you in getting that published, your experience, your story and things like that. So uh, this is something I really am very keen on uh, because I yeah. feel that all of you are doing so much good work. Uh, it hardly comes out in the open, uh, right? In terms of print media or any anybody reading about it and students reading about it and really getting inspiration. So anything that you know, if you can just, uh, I know it takes time. We always put this kind of writing work saying that are kal karenge, kal karenge, and it never happens. Uh, but I think if you really put your mind to it and maybe write a small, uh, you know, a one pager or something like that and send it to us, um, I, I definitely will put efforts from our side to see how this can be published. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, Hitoli, Harshika and Nagraj, we look forward to receiving such stories from your end, which would be inspiring mm -hmm. for everybody, uh, especially the budding optometrist. Um, uh, Sakina, okay. Um, do we have any questions on Facebook or any more questions? Uh, Harshita, ma'am, do we have any questions? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. So... Thank you so much. We would be winding up the session for today. Thank you all for your time and your sharing great experience for today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Lakshmi, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed today's session. Wonderful, wonderful listening to all of you, listening to all your experiences. And thank you so much for giving one hour uh, towards this session in between all your busy schedules and practices. So really appreciate your time. Thank you, ma'am, for all your efforts. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.